potatoes is a really dirty job. I will be completely honest with you. Um, planting potatoes is my the one thing I really don't like in the gardening. Um, either planting them or pulling them up, and I really don't like hilling them either. It's quite hard on the back. However, the potato crop is like one that if you have the right setup, and it's not that hard to do the kind of setup, you can keep potatoes all year round. Uh, if you put the right stuff in them, they're going to be prolific. So anyways, things that you'll need to get started. A bag of peat moss. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, you need a bag of peat moss. This in this bucket here, I have a mix of bone meal, blood meal, and Epsom salts. Um, I do have seed potatoes that I purchased, but I also have, these are potatoes from last year. You can let your own potatoes from last year uh, seed themselves, um, and because they'll start going. The only thing you want to make sure of is that you don't have uh, scab um, or any other type of disease. Uh, I would do all our own seed potatoes, except for we only have one bucket left and we need to eat them because uh, we won't have enough until these ones are ready of our own. So this last year I was maybe one bucket short. I should have kept another bucket down there and I'd have my own seed potatoes. So this year I'll be buying seed potatoes as well. Oh, here come the girls. Okay, the other things you're going to need. A rake. I chased them there. Yeah, you did chase them. And a hoe. So you'll need these. Epsom salts, bone meal, blood meal, I said that, peat moss. Compost if you have some. We already have compost tilled in and manure tilled in, so I don't really need to add more. And the other three important things, well, two important things for sure. Water, not for your potatoes, but for yourself. Sunscreen. So many gardeners get sunburnt the first couple days outside. It's beautiful, it's sunny, and you forget to put sunscreen on and you end up like charred at the end of the day. And if you're like me, and you have a bad back, which I do, um, I have three slightly herniated discs, and one of my discs is pinching my sciatic nerve, which makes it incredibly painful. So to try to help that, I do wear a brace just to kind of help. Anyway, so, first thing, you want to dig a fairly deep hole, or a trench anyway, that you can put your stuff in. So I'm just going to start digging these trenches. And you want it, uh, well we usually put ours about a foot down. Um, because then we can hill it and hill it again using the same dirt without having to bring in dirt. So I have dug my trenches. Um, I have my peat moss, my bone meal, blood meal, Epsom salt mix, seed potatoes, and then I did take a couple of our own from last year, but uh, I don't want to use too many of these because we don't have many left to eat. So, the bone meal and blood meal. I know this says bone meal, but I did make my own mix here and just reusing this bucket. But it is 50 50 bone meal, blood meal. And then I uh, put about a third of that Epsom salt so you can see the mix. I don't know if you can see the mix or not. And then I just mix it up thoroughly. The Epsom salts, I know a lot of people are wondering, like, I always talk about Epsom salts, but so there's um, a couple of reasons why we do the Epsom salts. Number one is it is an excellent source of magnesium. Um, and just like humans, you know, um, plants need different minerals and magnesium is something that uh, is quite often a little bit low in the boreal forest area. Uh, bone meal and blood meal, it does have nitrogen in it, but it also has a lot of other uh, nutrients that the plants use. So um, it's like a protein basically for plants. And peat moss. So peat moss is very important with potatoes and carrots. I'll talk about the carrots another time, but with the potatoes, if you line, and I'll show you what I'm going to do in a minute, if you line your, your trench with uh, peat moss, it helps with the scab. Um, quite often we'll get potato scab, and even if you're rotating your garden, which I do, uh, and not replanting it in the same spot for four years, sometimes scab still happens. And um, one of the ways to get rid of it is a plant in a completely different area if you can. 
Um, two, don't use seed potato that has scab or been near scab. That's a good reason to, to restart with your seed potatoes. And also, if you put peat moss, you lay that in the bottom, there's something in the peat moss, and I'll be honest, I don't know what it is, but there's something in the peat moss that really keeps helps keep control of the scab. So if you're worried about the potato scab, put some peat moss. All right, so I'm just gonna get things ready here, and then I'm gonna show you how to put your everything together. All right, so we're putting our peat moss in now. Okay, you wanna help me out? Okay, so I've done the peat moss. Now I'm going to sprinkle the bone blood meal and Epsom salt mix in. Uh, so that's pretty easy. Just sprinkle it so you can see it like salt and pepper. It looks like a salt and pepper mix on, uh, on your food, basically. It's not too thick, but not too thin. Pretty heavy salt and pepper, but yeah. Salt and pepper. All right. There you go. So that's how you prep your rows anyway. So now to actually plant. There's a lot of... Um... Hey Rexy, where are you going sweetheart? One minute. Yeah. You go ahead and run through that sprinkler as much as you want. I can put it as soon as I'm done this, I will. All right, so there is a lot of back and forth as to whether it's better to plant your potatoes earlier in the year or later in the year. So it is May 21st right now, um, if you really need to know, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, 3.30 more like it. But anyway, um, I plant mine early for only one reason, because it's the biggest crop in the garden and I need to plant around it. Um, just make sure you don't get the camera, please. Watch where you're going. Thank you. You can go pull that part of the garden if you'd like. Just not where I started already, okay? It really doesn't matter when you plant them. Potatoes do just as well if you plant them earlier as later. And actually, if you want my honest opinion, they probably do a little bit better if you plant them later on um, because they don't have that frost that kind of slows them down here and there. So if, if you're able to plant everything else and pretty confident you have enough space for your potatoes left over, it's okay to wait for your potatoes. Um, like I said, I just do it so that I can Does only plant everything else after. Like this no, every plant likes that. That's an excellent question. So this mix here, you can use for any of your plants. Any of them. Okay, now, rule of thumb is when you're planting your seed potatoes, that each section should have at least three eyes. So if, oh Rex, look where the chickens are. Go chase them away. I'll chase them through the water. Okay, good job. So I can actually cut this right here and make two potato plants out of it because there's at least three eyes on each one. Done and done. This one, one, two, this one has quite a few eyes, so I'm going to just make sure there's a big one on each side. You don't have to cut your potatoes, but I'm, I'm in the mindset of let's get as much as possible. This one I'm not going to cut because as you can see there's not really, there's a couple little nubbins here, but most of my seed, my roots are over here. Aww. Aww. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to put our potatoes in the garden. Um, no, you got to put them about like, about a foot apart-ish. I'm putting in the garden. Okay, so I put them, take one step and then put another. Okay, there you go. Not like that. All the way down, Rexy. And then put dirt on it. Yeah, once we get the whole roll full, we'll put some dirt on them. It's easier if you grab a whole bunch, if you can, but try not to break the roots off of them, okay? Okay. That's the... 
I like them more. Okay. Can you put some more food in there for them? Yeah. dirt to cover them. There, I turned it on the far as it can go. Thank you. I like to leave a little bit of dirt up here so that I can hill them a little easier later on because the dirt is available. Plus, as it rains, the rainwater will stay in the trenches where I want the rain so that the potatoes actually get water. So the first two rows are planted. I'm um, going to go ahead and do one more because I've got another. I gave some to the dog. Oh, thank you. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do a third row here. Um, covering your potatoes. So if your plants are starting to grow and you see a potato poking out, you need to hill them. Um, if the potato starts turning green, that is technically toxic. Uh, and you don't want to eat any potatoes. <coughs> Excuse you. Bless you that have green on them um, and it's the sun that makes them turn green. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, again, I don't know everything about anything but this is what I do and it works uh, and we're able to grow enough potatoes to last us usually a full year. And usually we're seed potatoes but this year no seed potatoes. Um, yeah, and later on this year I'll show you how sunny, sunny days I want the warmth of the summer sky